I believe in St. Nick. I believe in St. Nick, and I think it is important to tell his story every year for just a story of a saint. A saint being someone who reflects uh, Jesus in some way. Not, not perfectly, but we can look at a saint and say, ah, that right there, that part of their life, that's, that's Jesus right there. That was true of St. Nick, or as he was originally called, Bishop Nicholas of Myra, a place in modern-day Turkey, uh, back in the 4th century. Nick, born to a family with some property, was raised by his uncles after his parents died. As a young man, became a pastor and served the church in Myra, just down the road from where he was born and raised, uh, becoming bishop over time. And what he is remembered for is his anonymous generosity. He wanted to be generous to anyone who, who, who he could be generous to, but he didn't want any credit for it. He just wanted the, the present, the gift, to show up. And, and the story that is passed down about Bishop Nicholas, St. Nick, as he is eventually called, is a, a story of a family, a father who has three daughters, and he doesn't have any dowry money. And a dowry is the money you pay so that someone will marry your daughter. Because all those men, they have all these options of people they could marry. What are you gonna put in my palm? What, what, can you, what are you gonna do to make it worth my while for me to marry your daughter? Uh, we don't have dowries anymore, but it's still really expensive to have girls because who pays for the wedding? Yeah. So this is like a, a guy who has three daughters. He has to pay for the wedding, but it's, he has to pay for the wedding. And um, because at some point he's going to die, and then if, he, if his daughters have not been married, then they will end up, end up on the streets. They will end up uh, begging uh, as beggars or having to sell themselves. To, to be able to eat. And so this is a problem. And, and Bishop Nicholas, knowing this, on the night before the eldest daughter's birthday, when she would become a, of a marriageable age, he goes by the house and, and he throws through the open window a bag of gold coins. Some versions of the story, it's a small ball of gold. Uh, and, and so the next morning they wake up and there is the dowry. Now his, this father can, can have his eldest daughter can marry and he doesn't have to worry that his, his daughter will end up destitute. Same thing happens with the second daughter. The second daughter, the day before she is to turn of marriageable age, don't, don't you know, a, a sack of gold coins shows up and now she has a dowry. On the third time this happens, the father, who has figured out the pattern, he wakes up all night to try to meet whoever this benefactor is. Bishop Nicholas, not wanting to be caught, wanting to do this anonymously, uh, sneaks up on the roof. It's a city. Everything's pretty closely packed. And he drops the bag of gold coins or, or the gold ball down the chimney. And in the morning, they find the gold. But what had happened is it had fallen into the stockings that were hung by the chimney because that's where you'd hang them so that they would dry. And so I, I don't know if anyone here, uh, has anyone here ever gotten an orange in your stocking? That's where this comes from. The, this, the icon for St. Nick is of a man dressed a lot like myself in church garb, and in his hand are three gold balls, and that's where the orange is at Christmas. That's where that tradition begins with St. Nick, the first St. Nick. Now, what this Bishop Nicholas shows us is that he practices a generosity that is amazing and does not care about whether the person receiving it is worthy or, or not. There's no like questioning, you know, that oldest daughter, she minds, but that youngest daughter, ugh, I'm not sure about that. Right? He just, he gives. There's a need and he gives. And, and, that's, and, and in that way, St. Nicholas reflects Jesus in the way that Jesus came for all. Right? No one has to be worthy for Jesus to come. Uh, we read, God sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe, anyone who believes, it's not whoever Jesus comes, if they believe, whoever Jesus comes for, if they believe. No, it's whosoever could believe, anyone. Right? We read in the letters 
that are written in the New Testament, the, the way, the, the thing that the authors of Paul and some of the others, they want to make sure people hear is that Jesus came so that all might be saved. This is what Paul writes to Timothy. Jesus came so that everyone might be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. We read in 2 Peter that the Lord is patient with y'all. It's the pearl. Whenever you re read you in the Bible, it's almost always y'all. We just don't have a second person plural. The Lord is patient with y'all not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Right? And so the way that St. Nick reflects Jesus is the way that uh, St. Nicholas gives generously to all. And what is fascinating to me is how much we struggle to tell the story of St. Nick to tell it well. Because we mistell it on a regular basis when we tell it as a story of conditional gift giving. Right? To make it so that you only get a gift if you meet certain conditions, i.e. if you're nice. If you're naughty, you don't, right? If you look at how the Bishop of Mira gave, there's no sense of deserving that comes up in that story. The, there's no focus on the character of the person receiving, it's entirely a focus on the character of the person giving. And that's one story of one bishop. Thankfully, we have many stories of the person Bishop Nicholas is following. He is following in the footsteps of Jesus. And if you look at the Gospels, all the stories of Jesus, do you ever get the sense that Jesus is here just for some? Does that ever come across like that? Like Jesus on the cross does not look out across all the people and say, Father, forgive some of them, for they do not know what they do. Jesus says, Father, forgive them all of them, for they do not know what they do. To put as sharp as a point on this as possible, I don't buy it that St. Nick has a naughty and a nice list. I don't. I don't see it in him, and I don't see it in the Lord that St. Nick's follows, our Lord Jesus Christ. That we tell the story of St. Nick in a way that focuses on naughty and nice can get at un how uncomfortable we can be with the radical nature of grace. That Jesus loves all people, and all means all, and we do violence to that when we tell the story of St. Nick in a way that denies it, that tries to divide people into naughty and nice, the people who get gifts and those who do not. I was chatting about this with Olivia, uh, my wife, and she was the one who pointed out that Europe has, something, has done something different with, with this than we have in, in America with St. Nick. It's an interesting uh, difference, but has, it's the same temptation to mistell the story of St. Nick, to, make, to, to move it from a story of gifts for all because Jesus gave for all, to make it a story of conditional gift giving. You, you get a gift if you are a good boy or a good girl. And so we're familiar with how it works in America. I cannot pin down where the naughty and nice list comes from originally. I can tell you that the first time Santa Claus is coming to town was sung was in 1934 on a radio show. And that's about the same time that Twas a Night Before Christmas became very popular, though it was written the century before. And that is about the same time that Coke uh, started using Santa for advertising. Coke Coke did not invent all of the, the way, this way of telling the story of St. Nick, but it sure did market him. <laughs> Yep, jolly old dude, red, red, uh, red outfit, gives gifts to the naughty and nice, slap a Coke in his hand and put it on a billboard. Right? That, that's what Coke did with it. And so in America, we, the way we tone down the radical nature of grace is to say that St. Nick is, he, is, is here for all. He comes to every boy and girl, but he, for the naughty ones, they get coal. For the nice ones, they get presents. What Olivia pointed out to me is that that's not how it goes down in Eastern Europe. And uh, Austria, Bavaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, parts of Northern Italy, basically like the Eastern part of Europe and into the Caucasus, St. Nick has a sort of a dark counterpart. Who here has heard of Krampus? <laughs> Right? Some of you know of this. Krampus is the dark counterpart to Santa. He is half goat and half demon. It's, Krampus is like a Halloween costume that didn't get put away at Halloween. He is genuinely scary. I will not show my children pictures of Krampus anytime soon. Like, it is kind of scary. Uh, and so, when Saint Nick shows up, he has something on his back. He has a sack of gifts. And if you have been nice, you get something out of that sack of gifts. 
if you have been naughty, you don't get St. Nick showing up, Krampus shows up. And Krampus has a basket on his back. And in that basket, he stuffs all the little boys and the little girls who have been naughty, and he takes them away to eat them or to drown them. Right? That's Krampus. And you don't leave out milk and cookies for Krampus, you leave out schnapps. <laughs> Which just seems fitting somehow, right? So you put these two next to each other, and it seems a bit odd, but there really is a connection. In America, we mistell the story of Saint Nick by making it so Santa Claus, which is from the Dutch Sinterklaas, which is the Dutch version of Saint Nicholas, right? we, tell, we mistell the story of Saint Nick by talking about Santa Claus, who decides if you're nice or if you're naughty, then you get gifts depending upon that. While in Eastern Europe, Saint Nick, he just takes all the good boys to himself, and he delegates all the naughty boys to Krampus, and you better not see him coming. Right? Either way, it is a way to get around, to dodge, to mistell the story of Saint Nicholas, who comes to give to all, reflecting the way that Jesus came to forgive all out of a love for all. We struggle to hold on to that because the temptation is to say that I'm a good boy, I'm nice. I don't know about you, you look kind of naughty. Right? But, but I'm nice, right? We want, we want Jesus to be for us, but not necessarily for them. And to hold on that Jesus is for all can be a challenge. And so we hold on to the story of Bishop Nick of Myra, and he had one list. You know who was on his list? Everyone he could get to. Right? He had his list of people to love and forgive because he followed Jesus. And you know how many lists Jesus has? One. And who's on that list? Everybody. Everyone is on that list. Everyone is on that list because that list is a list of everyone that Jesus loves. Everyone Jesus is here to offer forgiveness for. Jesus has one list and you're on it. When we tell the story of Saint Nick in a way that distorts this, we risk misunderstanding the first gift of Christmas. It's the gift that counts the most. Jesus was born for all, not just for the nice. He was born for all. And if we're really honest, is any of us truly nice? Right? And when it comes down to it, none of us deserve what Jesus offers. And so I would suggest, and I realize I'm getting into the topic of parenting, which gets really dicey. I'll risk saying this. Let's get rid of naughty and nice lists at this time of year. Let's get rid of trying to use that as leverage against the kids. And yes, let's be good for goodness sake, because they do need to be good. A whole different topic. <laughs> now, there is one list you might be thinking of. There is a list in Scripture, and I, and I would be remiss if I did not mention it. In the book of Revelation, there is a list. It's the list in the book of life, and that is a fun topic, not for today. What I will point out about that list that is in the book of life is that it has not been written yet, and it will not be written until at the end of our respective lives. So let's not worry about that today. Let's leave that for another Sunday. As I began, so I end, I believe in St. Nick. I believe that he shows us something essential about who God is, that God loves, God gives, and God gives to all out of that love. And because of his love, the love of Saint Nick, which is an echo of Jesus' love, I believe that each one of us is going to wake up on Christmas Day, we will walk out and under the tree, there will be a gift for you. Because each one of you is on Saint Nick's list. Because he loves each one of you in the same way that Jesus loves each one of you. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me as we share our faith, proclaim our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed.